everyone, welcome to another episode of Pyathlon. In today's video, we will be discussing the internet computer and the ICP cryptocurrency. We will begin our discussion by explaining what ICP is, and then we will talk about its history, development team, and then we'll cover its timeline, price history, and price predictions. I will end the video after discussing an important caveat about this crypto that I have not seen widely covered, so be sure to watch until the end so you can really understand the price drivers behind this crypto. So we'll start by explaining what is the internet computer and ICP. The internet computer is a public network that provides an environment for smart contracts that run at web speed and is scalable and it can reduce compute costs by a million times or more. The purpose of this network is for developers to build decentralized financial applications, mass market tokenized social media services, or extend decentralized applications built on the Ethereum blockchain. On their website, they also have this phrase, Chase the blockchain singularity. What the founders of this internet computer mean by that is they want to create an internet that is free from the monopolistic internet providers and enable developers to host their decentralized applications directly on the internet computer. Now let's take a look at the architecture of the internet computer itself. This slide is from the internet computer overview, which I highly recommend you take a look at. This slide talks about how the ICP protocol runs on top of internet connected data centers, and then the internet computer, which is the public cyberspace, is built on top of that ICP protocol. Another important thing we need to talk about is canisters, which we'll talk about now. Internet computer is made up of what they like to call canisters. The job of a canister is essentially just to host a website or application. These canisters can also connect to one another to form larger distributed systems. All of this is facilitated by the Internet Computer Protocol. And here we have a diagram where you can really see how this all comes together. So you have the Internet Computer, which is comprised of these sub-networks that are in globally distributed data centers all across the world. And then within one of those subnets, you have the capability of code execution, message routing, you have the consensus mechanism, and it's all peer-to-peer, -peer, which is one of the advantages of the Internet Computer. Now, you also have the developer's computer, and here you can see that they have a canister software development kit, which is essentially what allows the developer to actually host their applications directly on the internet computer. Now, let's take a minute to actually talk about the physical data centers that are the backbone of the internet computer. You have to really understand this before you can understand how the internet computer works. So these data centers, they're not owned by any one organization. They're contributed from independently operated data centers all across the world. Now you may be wondering, why would someone contribute their data center or their computational resources to the internet computer? And the reason why they would do it is because they can get ICP tokens in exchange for doing so. So they have a financial incentive to donate their resources to the project. It's not really a donation because they're getting paid in exchange for it. But we're going to spend more time later in the video talking about all the ways in which you can acquire ICP tokens. Now we're going to go to another page where you can actually see what this looks like in practice. So in this simplified example, there's four data centers in four different countries. And you can see that these data centers are node providers that are the backbone of the internet computer itself. So if you host a decentralized application on the internet computer, then the actual physical location in which it might be stored is in these physical data centers. The next important concept we need to talk about are tokens and cycles, especially cycles. What a cycle is, is essentially a computational resource that allows you to develop on the internet computer. And so the way you can get cycles is you have to have ICP tokens, you can convert those tokens into cycles, and then you can develop on the internet computer. And you need those cycles is a prerequisite step in order to actually do that. So let's scroll down here. So let's say you can purchase or claim ICP tokens. In a couple of minutes, we'll talk about how you can other ways in which you can get ICP tokens. And so when you get them, you can trade them as assets for other assets, just like any other cryptocurrency. It is a currency, so you can trade it for any other crypto or asset. You can convert to cycles for development, which is what we're talking about now where if you want to develop on the internet computer, you can acquire some ICP, convert it to a cycle, and then that cycle will be the engine that, that you'll be able to use to host on the internet computer. 
or you can lock it up in neurons for government governance. And what that means is you'll be able to manage neurons and vote and submit proposals. So if you want to have a voice in the development of the internet computer, then you can lock your tokens up in neurons and then you'll be able to have a say in how it's actually governed. So those are the three things you can do if you have ICP tokens. Or if you're like a lot of people, you can just buy them on an exchange and just hold on and see where the value goes if you're trying to look at it from a more investment or speculative point of view. So let's take a step back and actually talk about how you can get these ICP tokens. I've already mentioned some of these methods, but I'll cover them just so we can make sure we have all our bases covered. So you can purchase your ICP tokens directly through an exchange. I know Coinbase has them and there are a lot of other exchanges where you can buy ICP. You can claim tokens as a result of your investment. You can receive a grant from the Internet Computer Association, which is what we're going to talk about next, or Divinity, which is the, the founder of ICP and the Internet Computer. Or you can receive tokens as remuneration for providing compute capacity as a node provider or data center, which is what we talked about earlier. That's the incentive to get people to donate their data centers and other computational resources to the Internet Computer Project. And the Internet Computer Association, the definition is ICA is a Geneva-based independent mem members organization that advocates for the Internet Computer Network while supporting and coordinating ecosystem participants. So I'll just give you an analogy so you can think of what that means in the real world. If the Internet Computer is a football team, then the Internet Computer Association is like the coach and the cheerleaders all rolled into one. They sort of provide vision as well as support for the team. And so let's like take a look at who comprises the ICA. So you can see there are several companies, obviously Divinity being one of them. But there's a lot of other companies in here. And now we're going to take a look at two of these companies. Specifically, we'll take a look at Polychain Capital, Scalar Capital, and Eterna to see the kind of companies that make up this organization. So the first one of these companies we're going to take a look at is Polychain Capital. So we're just going to go... We're on their about page now, we're just going to scroll down. And Polychain Capital is a crypto hedge fund that invests in blockchain technology and early token sales. So they're a venture capital firm, and they manage a crypto hedge fund. And we're not going to do a deep dive. You can go to their website and meet, read more about it if you want. But we're just going to quickly glance over what these companies do. So we'll move on to the next one, Eterna Capital. They don't have a whole lot on their website, but essentially they're a very similar thing. They invest in companies that are doing things with the blockchain or with crypto. And lastly, Scalar Capital was another member of the Internet Computer Association. And to be honest, there is not a lot you can find online about them. There's this one page, and then if you click their team, is there's only two people. So it says they're an investment company, but beyond that, there's not much to say about these companies. These companies seem like they're usually very small, and to be honest, I haven't heard of them before researching for this video. So it seems like the Internet Computer is still very much in its early stages, as well as the Internet Computer Association, and that's something you should consider if you want to invest in ICP. The last three things I want to cover in this video are the SDK, which stands for Software Development Kit, and then we'll start talking about the economics of the ICP token, and then we'll start talking about the past and potentially the future of the price of ICP. So we'll start by talking about the SDK, and this is extremely important. For those of you who may not be in the development world, an SDK stands for Software Development Kit, and it's the software that allows you to actually build applications for a platform. So in this case, this is the software development kit you would download that allows you to actually start building applications that run on the internet computer. And this page here is extremely important because the more people that download this SDK and start building on the internet computer that's going to have upward pressure on the price of ICP because they're going to have to continually buy ICP in order to convert their ICP and the cycles that they need to run their applications. So, and with that being said, let's actually move on and start talking about the inflation and deflation sources of ICP. So let's talk about the tokenomics of ICP. The important things to remember are there are two inflationary sources and one deflationary source. And we'll talk about the inflationary sources first. And an inflationary source increases the number of ICP in circulation. 
And the first inflationary source is paying notes for compute power. So those data centers that contribute to the internet computer, they receive ICP as payment, which increases the amount of ICP in circulation. The other inflationary source is paying governance participants. So remember, we talked about how you can take your ICP and convert it to neurons, and then you'll be able to actually vote on what happens with the internet computer. That also provides inflationary pressure because those people get an, some amount of ICP and reward for doing so because their ICP will be locked up for a certain amount of time. Now let's talk about the deflationary pressure. This comes when ICP is converted to cycles by developers. Remember, when you buy ICP and you use it to get compute power on the internet computer, you first have to convert, convert your ICP into cycles and that effectively destroys the ICP and pulls that ICP out of circulation. So the interaction between these inflationary and deflationary pressures can have an effect on the price of the actual ICP token itself, which is determined in the open market. So let's take a look at the price history of ICP, and then we'll look at some price predictions. But before we start talking about price, I need to give you a little disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not providing investment advice. I'm just providing you with some of the knowledge you need to know so you can look at how to analyze cryptos, and this is all for educational purposes. So with that being said, let's look at the price of ICP. So pretty much throughout all of 2020, the price was hovering around $8 into the teens, into the 20s. Then it was at about $14 at the start of 2021, and then the price shot up to its all-time high of, seven, of over $750. And then since then, it's been crashing, and it's currently at about $66.30. Of course, it's going to change by the time you watch this video, just due to the nature of crypto. But let's look at where other people see this price going. Personally, I don't like making price predictions myself. I think crypto is way too volatile to be able to do that. But let's look at what other people are saying about the price of ICP. So we can generally evaluate whether the, the sentiment is bullish or bearish. So if you go to pickcrypto.com, they say they think this is going to be anywhere from 1000 to seven to 1750 USD in 2021. That's an extremely bearish prediction. But if you go to longforecast.com, they think by the end of 2025, well, by the middle of 2025, the price will be somewhere between $100 and $122. So you can see there's a huge difference in where people think this crypto is going to go. But let's look at one more. We'll look at Wallet Investor. Their one-year forecast for ICP is about $3. So they're extremely bearish on it. They think this is a bad long-term investment and investors are going to lose a lot of money here. To be honest, I think you should take every single crypto price prediction with a very large grain of salt. No one can predict the future, especially with an asset that's volatile. No one knows if we're going to go into another crypto winter when prices will remain low for years or if the bear market from 2021 will continue and the price will continue to rage upwards. No one knows. Just do your research and make the best decision you can. But... Remember, what is going to ultimately drive the price of ICP is whether developers build on the network. ICP wants to replace cloud service providers and hosting providers and build a new internet, which is an, which is an extremely lofty goal. And just because you set a lofty goal, that doesn't mean you'll reach it. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Only time will tell. But a lot of projects that, have, that claim to be revolutionary often fail, but a handful of them will succeed. So is ICP going to be a failure? Or is it going to succeed? Once again, I don't have the answers to these questions, but you have to consider both sides before you make an investment decision. If you expect it to succeed, then you might want to buy ICP now. If you think it's going to fail, then maybe you shouldn't. But remember, that's all going to come down to whether developers decide to download that SDK and start building on the internet computer. And if they have a lot of options, they can build on AWS, or they can go to a site like Bluehost and get hosted there. So you have to think about what is their incentive to actually build on, ice on the internet computer. And once again, I don't have the answers. I'm just here to give you something to think about. So that wraps up today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Also visit us on social media. We have an Instagram and a Twitter at Piathlon. And please visit us on Piathlon.com and check out some other videos. We have a video that explains why you shouldn't just look at the price for crypto. And we have another video on Cartesi. So please go check those out. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.